Welcome to the North American Dipter Society 2022 general meeting. Uh, welcome back. This is the first one in a while yeah. that has been in person. So it's finally, uh, you know, this is the first one since COVID. Uh, aside from the field meeting, of course. So I didn't make it to this one, but there was a 2022 New Jersey Pine Barrens field meeting. That was to replace the 2021 field meeting that didn't happen. And so this is the first general meeting since COVID. Um, I'm going to keep this really brief. Uh, there's not a lot of speakers tonight, so you know, hopefully we can have some interesting talks. I'm not going to go for too long and then maybe do a little socializing afterwards. Uh, but there have been some changes to the North American Gypsy Society since we last met in person. Uh, so it is now officially incorporated as a nonprofit entity. Uh, the nonprofit status should help in terms of liability for an organization of the International Congress of Gypsyology 10, which will, of course, be in Reno, Nevada next year. Uh, we do have official bylaws, including an ethics statement and a code of conduct. And uh, I know Gamari has been pushing to make this sort of a more international society. And that's been the trend in fly times as well over the past, uh, you know, five to 10 years or so. Uh, there is also a push towards sort of a fly times facelift. I know Steve has been asking that if anyone is feeling particularly artistic and wants to work on a front or back cover, that he is accepting submissions for that. So uh, yeah, if anyone feels like updating the logo a little bit, then uh, you know, feel free to drop Steve an email. Uh, there's a social media presence now, so uh, you know, really uh, with the times, there's now a Facebook page, so that's some cutting edge social media stuff right there. Uh, there's a QR code if you want to check it out. Other than that, it should be pretty easy to find. Uh, there's also a Twitter, so uh, Twitter.com/dipterists. We'll see how long Twitter still lasts. So uh, you know, this may be irrelevant in another week or two. We'll see how that happens. Uh, there is a new website as well. So it's at dipterists.org. Uh, the old one at Nads Diptera does actually still function. And uh, Fly Times is being put on both of them still. But there is a new website you can check out. Again, you know, relatively new. Uh, there's also a listserv. So again, more kind of cutting edge social media technology here. But I believe that's where all of the uh, notifications from Steve are going out these days. So it's probably worth getting yourself added to the listserv if you want to stay up to date with everything that the Gipster Society is doing. Uh, as far as I can tell, this is the 34th birthday of Fly Times. So this is, you know, woo! Uh, yeah, woo! happy birthday, Fly Times. <laughs> the, uh, the one stop shop for important Gipsterological news. Uh, apparently, that logo was designed by Jeff Cumming back in the day. And appropriately enough, it is an ambit that's ballooning the entire earth. Kind of cool. Uh, based on what I can glean uh, from reading old issues of Fly Times, it actually originated after a meeting in Vancouver, BC. So this feels rather appropriate to, uh, to bring up here. So I just thought that was rather neat. I didn't know that. Uh, I was one years old at the time. So, oh, don't uh, say that. Yeah, sorry. A right. <laughs> little bit before my time. Um, well, you know, technically not before my time, but I, I was learning to walk. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so again, from doing some historical reading here, apparently the uh, the founding members and early major contributors and editors were, of course, uh, you know, Steve, Chris, Brian, Art, and Jeff. Um, you know, sadly, Chris is not with us anymore. Uh, these days, editorship has been uh, passed on to Steve Kamari and Chris Porkent, other uh, keen edged uh, editors, we might say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm here all night, folks. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, but yeah, so you know, thanks for that. These were these pictures were embarrassingly easy to find of them, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I kind of that, this isn't this is a little bit in honor of Chris Thompson and his love of lists. Uh, I decided to go through and look at the top contributors to fly times over time. Uh, Gamari did pull most of these numbers together, but I had to pull a few others. Uh, so Neil Evan Hughes is the all-time top contributor to Fly Times with 48 articles. Uh, Brian Brown has 42 articles. Uh, Chris had 41 articles. Uh, Jim O'Hara following with 38. Uh, Terry Wheeler with 29, also no longer with us. Yeah. And uh, Torsten Dico had 28. And Steve also had 28 articles, and you know, they probably have, he actually does have more. I should have added the 2018 to 2021 month, but I didn't have time. Uh, the one thing that Gamari never did do is he didn't add up the number of articles from people who were editors over time. 
I think that was partly because he's humble and partly because it's hard to tell, you know, what the editors actually wrote as articles, which of them were sort of the ones that were in every single issue. But I did actually go through the old index of articles and I did my best to count up the number of actual articles from people. And uh, so these are the numbers I came up with. They might be off by a little bit, but apparently Art wrote 44 articles so far for Fly Times. So that's quite a few, as well as being Question, the editor. Yeah, all of them rather questionable. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but sure. <laughs> uh, Jeff Cumming, 26-ish. Again, it was a little tricky to tell just from the title sometimes, which were you know editorial things and which were articles. So these numbers are approximate. Uh, Steve had 23-ish <laughs> articles. And uh, Chris Borkett had several, but I forgot to make that slide. A <laughs> um, couple other things is that you can now actually formally join the society uh, if you do so. There is a founding member uh, category that is available up till 2024. If you do that, it doesn't get you anything extra except you get listed as a founding member, uh, you know, forevermore. And so that's pretty cool. Uh, donations are also happily accepted. And again, you know, the money does all go to help support the society and keep things like this running. Uh, there's a couple upcoming meetings I wanted to mention as well. Uh, so there is the North American Tourist Society meeting in 2023. Uh, probably going to be somewhere in Western Washington State. Uh, yeah, I know, I want to go. Um, I think we're going to be getting details on that at some point, so I'm not going to kind of steal the thunder there, but that's sort of in the works right now. And there's also, of course, the International Congress of Pictorology. Uh, that's going to be in Reno uh, from July 16th to 21st. So that should be a lot of fun. Uh, I know all of the guys at the CDFA have been really busy trying to pull that one together. Uh, they were working on that since before I left the CDFA rather abruptly around March 2020. Um, so really what I, what I want to say in all of this is a uh, special thanks to Steve Kamari. I'm really sad he couldn't be here because without Steve, none of this would be possible. And I would suggest that maybe he has sort of an inordinate fondness for paperwork. Uh, he had been working on making this a nonprofit again since at least 2018, like actively working on it. It looked like it was a lot, lots and lots and lots of IRS paperwork. So uh, yeah, special thanks to Steve. Uh, I'd also like to say he was an amazingly supportive boss when I was his postdoc. Uh, the last conversation I had with him in person, again, I'm actually really sad he's not here because I give him a hard time about this. But we had a, uh, a lab meeting on Friday, uh, I think it was March 13th, and we were all asking, like, hey, do you think this COVID thing is going to be a big deal? And uh, Steve said, you know, I, I think, Andrew, you're being a little bit, you're being paranoid, you're blowing this out of proportion a bit, but I support you whatever decision you make. If you decide you have to fly back to Canada next week, I fully support you. Uh, later that day, Justin Trudeau announced the border was closing <laughs> after I'd gotten home for the day. And so I called him up and said, hey, Steve, remember you said that you'd support my decision to leave if I have to, even if it's next week? Yeah, I, I'm dropping my laptop off and I'm catching a flight tomorrow morning. Sorry, thanks for everything. Hey, Chris, you missed the embarrassing photos I found of you. Damn it. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, there is a recording. Yeah, there is a recording. <laughs> Damn it. So you can go live on YouTube. Right? Yes, yeah, literally, yes, we are putting it on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, so Steve was just an incredibly supportive guy. I think everyone that's met Steve knows that he is just really supportive. He's really engaged with the community. And uh, yeah, so thanks, Steve. Uh, other than that, uh, I know technically to stay on schedule, we should have a little 15 minute break here, but I don't think anyone here is running around between meetings right now. So I suspect we're safe to jump into Luke's. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Are you are you okay with that? Oh, oh yeah. Of course. Sure. It gives me okay. more time. At least in some of the previous meetings, yeah. we just had everybody sort of stand up real quick and say who they are. Uh, and I work on tetrated uh, fruit flies, subfamily Tridacini, so Oriental fruit fly, melon fly, and so forth. And this summer, I had my first trip uh, outside of the United States. Uh, since COVID, I went to Australia, I spent three weeks in uh, Brisbane and I uh, was able to see Dick Drew and Meredith Romick published the latest volume on Tifritids of Papua New Guinea 
for which I collected 30% of the holotypes while I was living here. All right, that's a dipterous note. <laughs> uh, I'm a new member, thanks Christian. I'm at University of Nevada, Reno, so I'll see you guys there. Uh, I work at, I work on Tekinid Lepidopter Interactions. Hi, my name is Sam. Uh, I am Andrew's first student. I am a PhD student. Um, as you can imagine, I work on surfeits. Uh, I've also worked with Jeff, so yes, lots of surfeits. Um, yeah, and that's, that's me. I also do a member. So. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm Andrew's second student, master's student, <laughs> <laughs> and I also work on flower flies. And I'm Art Borkent, and I work on the uh, systematics of Ceratopogonidae. <clears throat> My voice is going. Uh, Ceratopogonidae, um, I'm interested in just about everything about, about the group, and I'm interested in uh, the broader group as well, uh, of uh, other Culisomorpha and uh, evolution, phylogeny, all, all that. So, um, yeah, there we go. Uh, thank you, Mark. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, my name is uh, Chris Rosario, uh, and I'm the state entomologist of the Guam Department of Agriculture. Um, so we do have some uh, fruit fly projects that were uh, that are ongoing, specifically uh, serving for tidbits, um, the melon fly. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's all. Hello, I'm uh, Kevin Moran. I'm uh, Jeff's current P PhD student. Well, Andrew, this is former PhD student. And uh, I also work on surfeits. Big fuck frog. Frogs. And I'm Chris Borkant. I work on diptera of various sorts, mainly uh, my systematics background was in uh, working on mycetophilids and related thyroid flies. But I've also done fly pollination work, and then I also dabble in acrocerids with Jessica. It's my turn. My name is Steve Cook. I'm not a dipterist. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I work with beetles. That's but, okay. But I'm Luke's department head. Gold hand dolls. Okay, I'm not either. I'm an artist from the University of Idaho, and I am here with Sanford Eigenbrode to talk about our collaborative project on aphids, but I'm also here to spy on Luke because Gregory Turner Raman is my colleague, and I wanted to give him evidence of your talk about his father. <laughs> be in trouble, won't they? I'm, I'm spying. Uh, I'm Ross Miller. I'm an entomologist at the University of Guam. Uh, work with Chris. I've done a lot of tephritid work throughout Micronesia, but the real reason I'm here is uh, Luke is going to be talking about Bill Turner, who was one of my professors that I really thought was one of my formative. Uh, his systematics class was one of my formative experiences. So, thanks. Uh, I'm Matt Patone. I'm at NC State University where I identify all the arthropods. We love all arthropods, but flies are obviously hugely special in the heart. And one number one. I'm Carmen Yoka. I'm a survey entomologist for the state of Hawaii and I mean, all blind insects, but uh, yeah, up with uh, systematic. Hello, my name is Kelly. Um, I'm new, so it's great to be here. Um, I work with the Hawaii Department of Land and Natural Resources, and I'm working to uh, reintroduce a population of endangered Hawaiian Drosophila. So I work with Carl, um, and I'm just really excited to be here and hear about the Diverse Society. So, okay. I'm uh... I'm Joel Gibson. I'm the curator of the entomology collection at uh, the Royal BC Museum, which is just across the water. Um, so I work on a whole bunch of insects, but mostly I'd rather just work on eucalypturate flies and shoreline flies, including some Hawaiian stuff that I'll have to talk to you about because it's a shoreline. <laughs> Hi, uh, Morgan Jackson. I'm a postdoc at McGill uh, with Jessica, my advisor. Uh, and I have a history of mycophysians and tephritids and strats, but 
I go to this like optimize natural history and types of So thanks. Uh, Matt Peterson. I uh, worked on frame fly systematics a long time ago. I worked on them and hit pause. And so I don't know when that was 10 years ago. And so I'm unpausing now and finally have a lab space to work on some things again. So getting back into working on medicine. Oh, you went already? Oh, <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Jessica. I am, can I still say new prof at McGill after three years? Because I feel like, yes, there was a pandemic, if you have noticed. Um, I work on the Corsairids, but we don't have any new material, so we've been pretty much done. <laughs> and I've been branching out to many things, but I'm mostly interested in parasitoids. So, some of the students in the lab are working in cyamizids, then there's milikids, which are technically kleptoparasites, but there's neuroptera parasite or parasitic neuroptera as well. And Morgan and I are collaborating on a grant on cranberry pollination. So I've been working with Andrew as well on, on this project on cranberry. That's it. So, yeah. Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. Yeah, so my name is Andrew Young. Um, I mostly work on flower flies or serpidae, uh, taxonomy and systematics, although lately I've been branching out into agricultural pollination well, with the help of Sam and Emily. Uh, and I'm a new professor at uh, University of Guelph because Steve Marshall retired. So I deal with imposter syndrome every day. <laughs> <laughs>